Yes, I asked the question, am I in too deep? And the answer is, Maybe, probably actually, because this section of the swab requires the most amount of fabrication. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at three major components, the power steering pump and reservoir, the brakes, including the relocation using E34 540i brakes, and of course the radiator. How is that gonna mount? How is it gonna fit? How is it gonna plumb? Guys, stay tuned, you don't wanna miss this one. And oh, buy the hat, buy the hat. Check it out on my website. Now that the LT1's out of the way, you can see that I have installed an ICT billet power steering pump retrofit kit, which basically has the brackets and the pulleys. The pump goes here from an LS3 Camaro, link down in the description. The problem that I have is that this pump is going to be right here in this area. It's gonna be probably about yay high. And the brake booster is right in this area because we're gonna be using the E34 540i brake booster remote assembly that connects the firewall to the brake booster out in the front behind the driver's side headlight. The trick here is to make sure that the position of the actual booster does not interfere with the pump. Here, here is the booster assembly. Some modifications to the frame rail underneath here are gonna be required in order to get this thing to dip down below. This here is the bracket that mounts to the firewall. This guy needed to be lengthened and pushed over about an inch and a three quarters over this way in order to make room for the V8 cylinder head. The trick here is to make sure this guy, this assembly here is as far down and as far forward as possible without having the master cylinder make any interference with the driver's side headlight. And here it is. The brake system is now complete. Now there's a couple of finishing touches I still need to add, like the reservoir location. Um, I need to beef up this structure since I did cut it and now that's gonna be compromised. So I need to beef that up by having a bolt-on solution right on this face. No big deal. But the rest of the system works properly. This is bolted onto the firewall. The brake pedal is moved over approximately one and a half inches. This is mounted in three locations, two bolts here, one 17 millimeter M12 here, and then two M10s up above that's also welded to the wheel well structure. Now let's talk a little bit about the brake master cylinder where that's gonna be located and the reservoir in terms of where that's gonna be located in a remote fashion. Jeez, it hurts. Holy mother. So this is the brake master cylinder for the E34 540i. And typically it installs just like this. Right on this thing, sits in there, and that's where it goes. Unfortunately, as you'll see soon, when we put the engine back in, the power steering pump is going to be residing right in this location. So that's gonna have a direct interference. What's easier to remove or relocate? The power steering pump or the brake master cylinder? Since this is already remote, has two nylon quarter inch lines that go directly from it to the master cylinder, the reservoir is actually a lot easier to move and find a, a place to mount. And as you can see, there's already a hole here. There's a notch on this side and moving it over to probably something like on this other side is probably the easiest, most pragmatic thing to do. So that's what I would like to do is create a bracket that welds right off of this Stay, uh, steel bracket right here that allows me to install that right in that location. And that's pretty nice, right? Because it's right next to the fuse box, it's right next to the power steering reservoir, which will be there. Um, everything will be located on this little area here, right above the driver's side wheel housing. Now, let's talk about the brake master cylinder, which is located right in here. There it is. It's loose, right? But there is room for it. I had to make a couple of notches out by the hood latch. Um, and the behind the headlight bracket to, in order to make the room for the brake lines. And there'll be more, I, I continue to, to, to break out there in terms of making clearances. But right now this has a good, clear, easy way to remove and install. So this is where it's gonna be. In fact, on the 530 and the 540s, the brake master cylinder was located right behind the driver headlight, just like it normally is. So I have no reservation about putting this here, keeping that there right behind the headlight. 
There's no interferences to the headlight, so I know I'm good there. I think this is gonna be a really nice, fine, elegant solution that's gonna keep it out of the way. So now that we got the brake system installed, I wanna put the engine back in the car and size everything up just to see where our interferences are right now on that driver's side. There's a lot of stuff going on there. I wanna get the engine in, and I also wanna see if the power steering pulley interferes with the brake master cylinder and the vacuum booster. Let's see how easy it is <laughs> Easy, easy it is to install the engine. It's not as easy as you think. Power steering pump is installed and you can see the clearances are not bad actually. You know, you can easily get your finger in there on all sides. Clearance to the booster is good. Clearance to the bracket is good. Unfortunately, the booster will not fit in the, in the stock location. It, it is really, really close to the reservoir and the pulley. So that is not gonna happen. Instead, we're gonna mount it right down here, right next to the fuse box. So it's pretty easy. You got an M10 bolt there. We're gonna end up fabricating that, welding that onto this and making a bit of a bracket that goes from here to there that allows you to just basically install it and remove it easily, just like you normally would here with the existing uh, nub. So what we've got here is an Eastwood Tri-Flow Radiator, basically the Chrysler Ford style, which has the inlet up top and the, the outlet down here below. This works perfect for our LT1 application. This is over two inches thick and it's a tri-flow radiator. What that means is that the hot coolant comes in on the first top third. It goes through this header tank where the cooling thing gets routed right through here and it goes through this radiator again for a second try to this core where it then comes down and comes over through the radiator a third time where it then goes out the cold side. So this has actually been proven to reduce engine temperatures by up to 20 degrees and that's why I decided to go with this radiator. Not to mention, as I said earlier, the inland outlets are on the right side for this to work with the LT1 and it is the perfect overall width to fit within the frame rails of the E24 without having to do many modifications. There is one modification that we need to make, however, and that is on these brackets that came welded onto the side of the headers. They not only position the radiator too far forward, or closer to the engine rather, but they also are too wide, so we must cut them off, and we, we have to TIG weld our own brackets that are gonna end up getting screwed onto the frame rails of the E24 ourselves. This is the best radiator that I have found that keeps engine temperatures the coolest. It mounts correctly and it um, is gonna look good too. So this side of the radiator here faces the forward side of the car or the grill rather, right? And this is supposed to mount on the, uh, the frame, the, the sidewalls or let's call it the, uh, the, the radiator core support. Look how much higher this is than the actual core. It's literally like at least three quarters of an inch higher, um, which means it's going to position the radiator that much more that way, and it's gonna reduce our opportunity to put a cooling fan in there. So that's not gonna happen. We need to cut this off and we need to weld in uh, new tabs exactly where we want them. So first, let's just cut these off and then let's put the radiator in and see how it fits. Looks like it's pretty pinned up against here. Um, I don't like the fact that there's some air gap in here that's gonna allow air to come in and escape out that way without going through the radiator. That's no good. Uh, the, lower, the lower outlet we have a lot of room for. That's gonna end up curling that around, keep it underneath, and it's gonna come right to there. Here's another view of it. There it is right over there, and it's gonna come all the way down below, and it's gonna to connect to right here. And here's the upper. 
The upper is going to go from here and go right into the thermostat radiator, the thermostat output directly to here. So this is actually a pretty easy run. Um, I might have to cut this and weld an elbow to it just to make it a little bit easier to route and with maybe perhaps one quick little uh, rubber hose there and that's easy. I think the lower will be a little bit more complex. But it looks like we have enough room here for a uh, radiator fan. Let's, uh, let's take a look and see what a 16 inch puller fan would look like in there. This here is a 16 inch spal fan or spal equivalent fan. And it looks like if I mount this thing right smack in the middle, I still have a good amount of clearance here. In fact, I can probably push it over a little bit to get the clearance that I need to the power steering pulley bracket. But it looks like it'll be okay. I mean, even if I push it out a little bit to make room for a shroud, it looks like it's going to have plenty of room in order to, uh, to mount right here. So I'm pretty happy about getting a fan in there. 